Yes, so Let's to, to answer the question from the previous speaker, uh, yes, with uh, the GHDL you can do uh, formal verification in symbiosis, which I will talk about. Um, so, yeah, who am I? I am basically a software developer who turned electrical engineer. And this, so this summer I have been uh, working on making a CPU in PHDL synthesizer to uh, 74 chips. And meanwhile, hacking on uh, GHDL to, to support this code. And then also uh, extend it to do, to do formal verification. Um, and I'm also doing now currently an internship at Symbiotic EDA to document the bitstream of uh, Go and Semi FPGAs. Uh, but that not, that's not really the topic of this presentation. Um, oh, where, all the way around. So yeah, basically, uh, to just give an overview of all the software, and probably most of you know this, uh, but I'll explain it briefly. Um, sort of the, the yeah, this, the synthesis tool chain is sort of uh, composed of Yosis, which is sort of the synthesis itself, which generates uh, a netlist from your HDL code, uh, which is then fed to an ex next PNR for bitstream generation. Uh, but for formal verification, you can also use Symbios of uh, Yosis to generate the netlist, but then use Symbiosis to uh, uh, convert this as SMT format that you can feed to uh, sev several solvers to do the analysis. And uh, Yosis uh, includes several front ends for reading HDL. Uh, the built-in one is mainly Verilog. Uh, and then there's a commercial support for, with Verific for uh, System Verilog and VCL, which you can use for formal figure verification as well. But then you have to write your test bench for VHDL in System Verilog, which I find a bit awkward. Um, and the new work in progress thing is that uh, GHDL is now gaining synthesis support which I've been contributing a bit to, that you can also use with Yosis to uh, do various like, synthesis and formal verification things. Uh, yeah, so GHDL is basically uh, a VHDL simulator that Tristan, who is also in the audience, has been working on for several decades. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and it has very good uh, support for VHDL 2008, and it's written in ADA, which is not very widely used but it's very similar to VHDL, so in my experience, it's fairly easy if you know VHDL to cont contribute to it because you basically already sort of know the language. Uh, and yeah, so he has been working on uh, synthesis uh, now, and I've been working on that a bit as well. And uh, there's now also a Yosis plugin, which uh, is sort of converts VHDL to the internal representation of Yosis, so you can sort of load the GHDL module and then save the GHDL file, uh, elaborate, and you know, just like, synthesize it or whatever. Or uh, with PSL support, you can also do formal verification with it. Um, so it's still work in progress. And <laughs> I wrote these slides, and then I, uh, I messaged Tristan. It's like, hey, what is, uh, is this still fine? He's like, no, nah, the functions work now. So it's, it's growing fast. So uh, uh, yeah, but what the interesting thing is that it supports PSL. Um, which uh, you can, we will talk about in a bit. Um, but at the moment, if you take, a, take a, bit, a big existing project, it will most likely crash with weird errors. But if you write new code, uh, it, you can just work with all the things that are there, and it's uh, fine. So I, I wrote a CPU in VHDL using the GHDL plugin, and then synthesized it and formally verified it. Um, so yeah, um, the CPU is going to be synthesized to logic chips, but for now it's running an FPGA, which I'm using to run this presentation now. Um, and okay, yeah. So brief intro to what form verification is for those who don't know. Um, it sounds very scary to me when I first hear it. It's like, oh yeah, you know, formal proofs and theories and whatever, but it's more like. Property testing, which so if you know, if you know quick check, it's more similar to that. Uh, so you sort of make you constrain your inputs to what is sort of valid uh, for your program, and then make assertions about it as like this is 
this should be true at all times or for a specific time. And then there's these SMT solvers uh, that uh, sort of prove that your assumption hold or provide a counterexample that say it's not true. Um, and basically, PSL is the language on top of VHDL and also Verilog, which extends the language with uh, keywords for provide ex expressing properties and assumptions. And also uh, express sequences for things that should be true acro across time. So you can say like, this should be true, then this, then this, then this. Um, and this is also supported in uh, GHDL. And since VHDL 2008, you don't have to hide them in special comments, but you can just write them as part of your main code, which is neat. Um, so I will take you through an example of the ALU of my CPU. And I'll drink some water while you look at this code. So basically this uh, LU is a bit serial one where you uh, operate on one bit at a time. Um, so what you see at the top is a combinatorial process that acts on an opcode with a case statement. So it says, like, okay, if the opcode is zero, then we'll take to the, the first input bits, uh, do some logic operation on them, and then produce an output. And we also produce a carry out uh, for the next bit, basically. And there's also a carry reset value that sets the reset on the initial bit. And then the, sec the, the sequential process, the clock process, it says, okay, if, if, if we're in reset, we set the value to the reset carry. And otherwise, we just copy the carry out to the carry in and go to the next operation, basically. Um, so, yeah, then you can write a, a formal formal code for this. So if you don't need to write like a whole a whole test bench. You can just put this code in your main file, basically, and just run it, which is, I think, neat. Um, so the first thing I did is basically to say, okay, um, I don't want to write sort of generic length code for all possible values. So I say, okay, I restrict the reset value to go low and then go high for eight bits uh, and then uh, go low again. So this is one, a sequence across time, basically. Um, and I, I don't specify the inputs. The input, inputs are generated by this uh, SMT solver. And the other thing that I specify is um, that I don't want the opcode to change in the middle of a sequence. So you, you're not doing like an XOR and then the middle of the sequence go to an addition. Um, it will just stay constant. Um, and then finally, the sort of the assertion, the properties that you want to specify is that I, uh, I accumulate the outputs and the inputs every clock cycle. And then uh, when the reset goes from high to low, so it, it, it completed the whole sequence, I compare that the addition in this case of the inputs equals the output. Um, and then the only thing that you need to run this basically is this uh, SPI file where you specify to uh, Symbiosis how to uh, compile your code and how to run it basically. So I just set some, some options on uh, the solver and uh, sets the script and it's noteworthy here that you should either provide std08 to embed your PSL or provide like a PSL flag to uh, use as comments. Uh, and also when you run it with the SPI, you need to sort of set Yosis to include the GHDL uh, module, otherwise it, you can't use the GHDL command in the SPI file. Um, but as you can see here, uh, we have a bug actually, um, because the uh, assert failed, and it tells you which assertion uh, failed as well if you provide a sort of label in front of it, like I did here, I addition. Um, and here you can see sort of the, the trace that it generates for the, the, for the failed case. Um, and if you, so we, we see at the top it, it did an XOR and then it went to a subtraction. And then at the end, it, uh, the values are, well, what they are there. But if you do the subtraction, like actually, you see the results off by one. And if you look carefully, uh, XOR had a carry reset of zero, and by subtract, the carry reset is one. 
And what actually happened is that it turned out if your opcode changes the cycle before you go out of reset, it, changes the, it, it takes the reset value of the old uh, cycle, and then it, it's off by one or off by some other logic function. Um, and I think this is really a power of formal verification that, I mean, I didn't write a test bench. I didn't have to think about this edge case. I just specified the properties. But if you were just wrote a test bench to test this and say, like, oh, I do some instructions on different values, then you might not find it. You might not think of this reset edge case on the edge of the change of values. Uh, but this, this prover will find this for you always, <laughs> basically, if, you are, if your properties are okay. Uh, and I think that's really powerful. But yeah, so the, the okay, solution is not super interesting. Either do it uh, combinatorically on, on based on the input or change your code so that your input value is, uh, your, your, your opcode is always uh, constant before the reset, which ended up being more uh, logically efficient. Um, so that's, I think, everything I wanted to cover. Um, so yeah, syn uh, GSGL synthesis is uh, growing fast, and if you're into VSGL, you should definitely check it out. Uh, and if you want to contribute, of course. Um, and I think for form of verification is also a really powerful tool that's worth looking at. Uh, it's, yeah, you can just, as, uh, the way I see it is like, you don't have to write test pens, it's just like an easy way to test your code. And also interesting is that uh, Dan is giving also a talk on formal verification later, so it will also be interesting. And of course, I'll be around, uh, so come talk to me, and uh, yeah, that's it. I just wanted to let people know that there are Docker images available with EHDL, Yosis, the plugin, Simbi Yosis, and some solvers. So you can try this presentation and this example straight away without having to build all the tools yourself. More like a meta question. Did you give it also at uh, the CCC camp? Because drink more water sounds like it was appropriate in that context. I, I did not give it at CCC camp, but uh, it probably picked up this uh, from there, from another CCC congress or something. More questions? Then let's thank the speaker again.